Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyPhotos.com and today I'm sharing my top mixed media favorites for beginners, for starters, for people trying to build their stash and want to make sure they have the basics that I love to use. Now everyone has different styles and tastes and what they like to use on their pages and how they like to use on their them on their pages, but I do want to share today some favorite sort of style of products, some types of products you might want to look into expanding your stash with or investing in to get started with mixed media, as well as some tools you might want to get started to invest in for mixed media. Now in general, a lot of these things are on the inexpensive side if you buy a smaller quantity, which I really, really like as starting points, some first steps into mixed media. And as you can probably tell from the color palette here, a lot of neutrals. Depending on how you scrapbook, you might want to look into some more colorful options, but I find the neutrals tend to be the ones I reach for most, whether that's a metallic version or a white touch or a black or a gold or a silver. And of course, we always have our watercolors here, but let's dive right into the first item that's on a majority of lists like this, and that is called Gesso. Um, I have my really old Dina Wakely one that honestly is probably pretty empty, and then I have my newer Vicki Booten one. And what Gesso is, is, let me open it so you can have a demo here, a whitish or clearish, depending on what color you get, I would call it more of like a glue consistency. Um, what this does is, again, depending on if you buy a clear drying or a white drying, is a prep for your paper. So depending on what type of mixed media you end up doing, you don't want the color to seep into the paper because it will either warp it, distort it, distort the color even, and this helps keep it on top of the paper. So it's almost like a protective layer for your paper so it doesn't fully absorb the uh, contents of your mixed media. So it preserves the color components and helps move the items around. So saying you're doing a fun watercolor background, you don't want them to instantly soak into the paper. You want them to be able to meld together and get that cool, like ethereal look. So that is what gesso is typically used for. A majority of my layouts, I do not use gesso. I have a lot of faith in the papers I purchase for the most part that they'll be able to withhold a lot of the different mixed media styles I do. No, that's not to say I don't experience the warping. I do experience the warping um, of the paper itself, but once it's in a page protector and in a book for a little bit, usually it settles down just fine. But a lot of people do this to preserve the color integrity of their mixed media they're putting on top of their paper. So you probably want to invest in some gesso. For example, this one was $2.99 at Tuesday morning. A little does go a long way because you're spreading a thin layer of it on your background that you're going to do the mixed media on. So it can really go far away. Again, there's clear variety there's white um, and they also sell ones that are outside of the scrapbooking brand you could find them at chain stores big box like Michaels and Joann's you can find them there's also artist quality ones that they would use on like a painting for example so tons of different options out there um, I liked both of these again didn't use them too too much I had faith in my paper Probably not the best mixed media artist to be asking but I did want to make this video because a lot of people were requesting it after my minimal mixed media series and you guys rarely saw gesso in that but I always have it on hand in case there is a you know water heavy or a product heavy mixed media technique I want to do always having that on hand is a good idea next up similar to gesso in a way because it comes in a tub usually is modeling paste this is by far my number one used type of mixed media product on all of my pages I love modeling paste. I have, I think, only four different varieties. Um, I have this white one. I've already finished a different brand of the white modeling paste. This has been my favorite brand so far. It gets a little crusty when I close it, um, but it dries hard, in case you guys didn't know. But before that, it's almost like a frosting consistency. So if I open this up, uh, it looks, I just want to eat it. That's so bad, but like, it doesn't it look like frosting? You guys get it. Anywho, modeling paste can come in a variety of colors. Um, Heidi Swap put out some modeling pastes a couple years ago. I'm not sure if she's still releasing those. Remember how I said it gets crusty? That's because I scrape it off on the sides, but modeling paste. Uh, what's really nice about a white jar of modeling paste is you can take some out and then mix it with a reinker you might have or some acrylic paint you might have to change and alter the color of it very very easily but there are some colored modeling pastes on the market i have the gold and the silver from heidi swap i also have the metallic blue version so I love modeling paste. I love gel and sort of dimensional type textures because they go with one of my favorite tools, which we'll be talking about in the second part of this video, 
but modeling paste is something that I think is so easy to use because you put your item down that you want to put modeling paste on, you put down a stencil, you put down whatever you want to run it through, you put it through, it dries pretty quickly. You could always use your heat gun to accelerate the drying. But again, the flexibility with a tub like this, I believe this might have been from Amazon. Um, I think around the $6 range might have changed since then. And I'll try to have all of these linked down below for you guys in case you're interested in trying them out yourself. Um, and if any of these are no longer available, like this Heidi Swap lines from a few years ago, but I'll find some substitutes in case you're interested. But easy thing to invest in. This will last you a long time. A little bit of modeling paste goes a super long way. Um, probably like um, less than maybe I would say half a tablespoon will cover a whole background. Um, so you can really make it work and last for you. And I really love this brand so far for everything I've done with it. And I like that it dries a bright white. Um, sometimes you'll experience ones that dry a little bit more yellowy white or cream. Um, so you can just be careful with which one you pick out and make sure you read reviews, of course, depending on what you're looking for. Next up on my list is another favorite. And this is probably because I once had a stash full of paints that are acrylic. So I still have a ton of acrylic paints, but they started making paints for the scrapbooking and card making market. Um, so I pulled out some of those. Now you can totally use acrylic paint too. I find the acrylic paints a slight bit more waterier than one of these sort of paints. So these are acrylic paints as well. So this is the Dilutions line by Dina. And I think it is, well, I can just open it for you guys to show you make sure it's all fallen now that I just tipped it over. Um, but I have a ton of different colors of the wonderful Dilution paints. I know some people experience dried outness with theirs, um, but I haven't experienced that with any of my colors so far. They're very thick and you can always sort of re-wet acrylics to make them work if you're keeping an eye on them. And then of course we have some other options like the Dilution Distress Paints illusion Tim Holtz distress paint so I picked out the picket fence one I have and then here is a shimmers paint and this is called an acrotone so what's nice about this specific brand um, an acrotones means it's a self-priming acrylic paint with a matte finish so there's obviously a ton of different paints out there ton of different finishes but with a self-priming acrylic paint it's sort of like saying skip the gesso layer you don't need it it primes it's good it's thick you don't need a base coat under it because it's not thin it's a nice opaque paint um, and you'll find that some a lot thicker than others like the uh, dilutions paint you can get really thin so you can get like this ghosty look to your projects whereas the shimmers you'd have to like practically water it down to get that similar look so knowing what you're looking for is helpful again you can substitute any sort of paints for these in the acrylic variety I find they're really super fun to do painted backgrounds with, whether that's stripes um, or doing circles. You've seen me do a couple of those. Um, it's just super fun to add that sort of paintbrush texture to any page. And again, the neutrals are where my heart is at. And if you have things already in your stash, like re-inkers or just plain ink in your stash, you can always take some like white acrylic paint, color it yourself, and then use it. So there's totally so many options in which you can color your own items. In fact, you could probably even use like if you had a mixed media mat, you could probably put down some ink and just let it sit there, then add paint to it and mix it in and you'd be golden and you could have a different colored paint. So I think investing in a white paint in a black paint set would be really good. Again, reasonable price points for these and not, I would say this one's a lot more paint to go through. So if you don't think you're going to use a ton, go for a smaller one, or you can start off with a cheap uh, acrylic paint from a big box store. These are around a dollar, if not two. Um, and these go a long way too. So whatever you need, you can find it. And if you're into colors, buy a couple of the cheap acrylic paint colors. Again, you can always let your kids play with them if you don't want to use them on your layouts anymore, whatever it may be. But um, I do love using paints on my layouts. Next up in this section are sprays and mists. I think a lot of people are intimidated by sprays and mists because they think you have to spray them out of the bottle. And I will say to you guys right now, I rarely, rarely do that with my spray and mists. Typically what I do is add flicks at the end of my pages, which if you guys just saw the previous video on my channel, I flipped through some of the layouts I made for my minimal mixed media series. So something I like to do is um, essentially you just take off the cap. I shouldn't have had these laying down for this example. Um, and then you use what's on the mist bottle here and flick it onto your layout. Um, that's a finishing technique I love on my pages. Absolutely adore it. And you can also do selective versions of that by just using the tip of the mist topper 
and lightly putting them on your pages if you're a little bit too scared to go for that random look. Um, but I highly, highly recommend getting Gold Heidi Swap Color Shine if you can get your hands on it. Now there are great substitutes on the market too. I know Shimmers has put out some new gold ones and there's other brands as well. And I recently bought these two earlier last year and I've been loving having an option that is black and white because I didn't have those colors before, but dang do I reach for them more and more now um, that I actually have them. So I wish I had those sooner rather than the other colors but those are just some of the things I do with them. Another thing I've done with mists before is something called the packaging technique where you take a piece of plastic package, you put some of the spray mist on it. I always use the nozzle again. I don't spray it because that has a ricochet effect. And then once it's a little puddle there, then you squish it onto your paper to get that cool background like organic sort of shape. Um, so that's a really fun thing to do with sprays. Now with sprays, you can have ink sprays, you can have shimmer sprays. The market's huge for sprays. Um, I will say there are some favorites. There's some non-favorites. Things like big box stores, the ones that I've experienced, like Recollections put out sprays a few years ago, and I bought them, was so excited to use them, got back, very little color payoff. Um, the silver one smells horrendous, like uh, chemicals, so be really cautious of the ones you buy. I tend to find name brand styles a lot, lot better than the big box store ones, um, and even like Shimmers Paints puts out a lot of different ones, so I have some of their colored versions, but this one is a shimmer. They also have ones that are matte, um, so there's a really, really wide variety out there, and again, I'll link some down below so you guys can check those out if you're interested, but if you're not into sprays, if they intimidate you too much or you want more variety, you want more colors, this is too much of an investment, watercolors may be your best bet. Now this is the only like full watercolor set I have. It's the Cheap Artist Loft one from Michaels that was very, very popular a few years ago. I will say the quality of this watercolor set is very disappointing and that's probably why I don't use watercolors as often as I should because I'm just so disappointed with the chalky look that these give. However, watercolors are a great, great way to invest in a small pan set like this and you can get better ones, better quality ones for a little bit more money. Like I said, this one used to be $5 at Michael's. You can see I've used it. It's just been disappointing each time um, and it looks like one broke. Oh. Well, that's news. I didn't know that happened. Um, but I really, really like the idea of having all of these colors in one spot because like I said, you can utilize these. You can mix your own colors um, and make various shades throughout. And you can do similar techniques to here. You can do the packaging technique by wetting one of these, putting it on a piece of plastic packaging, smooshing it on your background. You can use the gesso to prime your background because you have a lot of water involved, obviously, but um, this has a lot of colors for a cheaper price point than any of these other options. But I will say, I don't reach for too many colors that often. I could definitely have my mixed media stash if I really, really wanted to because I reach for blues and greens the most. Um, but it's nice to have those other colors to remind me. And I did do a whole series showing my mixed media collection. If you haven't seen that yet, video yet, I'll have it linked down below. Um, but I don't use my watercolors too much. I probably will invest in a better set eventually, but until that day comes, we will we will continue on with this beast. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not great quality. Again, that chalky finish looks really, really bad on some textures of paper, so you have to be pretty careful with it. But those are my product recommendations for you guys. Be sure to be subscribed so you can see what I'm going to talk about in the next video, which is the tools to go with these products. So be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. But if you have any questions, please leave them down below because obviously we talked about a lot in a little short time frame. But let me again say I am no mixed media experts. There are so many so, so many better mixed media artists out there who've made several videos like these. So look around, find somebody who has a style you like um, and figure out if there's a hybrid. So maybe you like my style and you like someone else's, but we do different types of pieces. Maybe select a few off of each list, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I'm a neutral gal. Don't be afraid to go buy some colors. If you know you're going to be making a ton of boy layouts that'll have blue because of their football team, blue may be the way to go for you. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this small insight into my favorites and my recommendations for some beginners or some people looking to build out their stash. All the links will be down below for these items that are still available as well as other uh, substitute items if not. But thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we talk about my favorite tools for mixed media because that's just as important as the products themselves. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.